Happy Victory Tuesday. Welcome to this overreaction edition of the Chiefs Report. Power by Chat Sports, Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us as we take a look back at last night's win for your Kansas City Chiefs over the New Orleans Saints as they are now 5-0 heading into the bye week. We'll share our final thoughts on last night's performance and look ahead for what's next for the Kansas City Chiefs coming up on today's show. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. It was a big night in Kansas City as our town, Casey Moe, took the center of the sports universe with the Chiefs win, the Royals with the playoff win. The vibes were immaculate last night, folks. If you enjoyed that Chiefs win, if you enjoyed the Royals win, like the video and show some love for one Arrowhead Drive for everybody at the Truman Sports Complex. Like the video, and we'll get started here with today's show. 26-13, to the final score. The Chiefs get it done against the New Orleans Saints in a game that they dominated. I thought this was the best performance that the Kansas City Chiefs have put together so far this season based on the way they played from start to finish and on all sides, offensively, defensively, uh, special teams. This was a well-rounded performance. And I think the next question becomes... Are the Kansas City Chiefs the best team in the National Football League? And through the first five games of the season, I have seen no reason to think otherwise that the Chiefs are not still the team to beat and the best team in the NFL to start the season. When you think about where this Chiefs team is at right now through the first five games of the year, they are not even playing to their full potential yet. They've been very shorthanded. You guys know about the injuries to Pacheco and Hollywood and Rice and all that. And having to turn to guys like Juju and Kareem Hunt. And Patrick Mahomes still trying to figure things out. Travis Kelsey got off to a slow start to this year. And the defense has been so good. This team is finding ways to win. And their best football is still in front of them. Watch out. The Kansas City Chiefs. The Super Bowl is within sight, folks. Get ready. You look at the schedule of what's ahead for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, we'll get to the what's ahead in just a moment, but kind of recap the way things have gone so far. You start off with that win against the Ravens week one. Then you beat the Bengals in a close game, found a way to win that one, 26-25. You go on the road and you beat the Atlanta Falcons in a primetime game. The Chargers game where you lost Rasheed Rice, you got off to a slow start, but you found a way to win that one. And then last night against the New Orleans Saints, this performance I feel like was a huge step in the right direction of where this Kansas City Chiefs team goes from here heading into the bye week. And you think about this, week seven, you take on the San Francisco 49ers coming off the bye, a rematch of the Super Bowl. No coach in the NFL is better coming off a bye week than Andy Reid. I feel pretty confident in the Chiefs' chances going into Week 7. You play the Raiders to follow after that Week 8. I'm not concerned at all about facing the Raiders, especially without Devontae Adams now. they got a lot of problems. Then you come home Week 9 for another Monday night football matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Baker Mayfield and company, they're playing some good football. The Broncos, I think, are better than what people anticipated, especially after the rough start to the season from Bo Nix and company. But you're at home there. And then you face the Buffalo Bills week 11. So with that said, the Chiefs have already faced some tough tests and some tough challenges. And then you go over this next stretch here, and I feel like when it's all said and done, it's not impossible. We could be looking at the Chiefs starting this season 10-0. and That's a realistic possibility with how well they played last night to be at 5-0 and right now and with how this team is evolving even with the adversity that they have faced, I think that this team is in great shape right now. Are the Chiefs the best team in the NFL? What do you guys think? Why for yes, in for no. It's our pinned comment today. Weigh in. Let us know what you think. Number two on Overreaction Tuesday, the Chiefs don't need Rasheed Rice. I heard some of y'all saying that after last night's performance with how well Juju played and Travis Kelsey, among others here. And I'm going to call that an overreaction. Rasheed Rice was looking fantastic 
to start the season. As heading into week four, he was first in catches in the NFL, second in yards, and 10th in receiving touchdowns. He looked like a top 10 receiver. It was huge to see Juju step up. But that doesn't mean you don't need Rasheed Rice by any stretch. I think what the Chiefs have proven, though, whether it's this year or the last few years, is that you can get away with not paying your receiving core a ton of money. Outside of Travis Kelsey at the tight end position, none of those guys are making a lot of cash, Rasheed Rice included, with the rookie contract he's on. And you look at you know Tyreek Hill, he's out in Miami doing his thing. And that team's a dumpster fire. That's a mess. They are not going anywhere with Tyreek Hill getting the money he's being paid and Jalen Waddell and others here. The Chiefs, Brett Veach and company, have made this work with the circumstances. You think about Juju last night. They literally picked up Juju off the streets a few weeks ago. He was released by one of the worst teams in the NFL, the New England Patriots. He wasn't good enough to play for New England. But you know what happens, what makes Patrick Mahomes so good is he gets the most out of these players that were left for dead elsewhere. Who would have thought Juju? And I know people are going to bring up the dropped touchdown that resulted in an interception. But did anyone realistically think that Juju still had a 130-yard game left in him against a decent Saints defense, might I add? Now, you don't have Rasheed Rice, but we did get some good news yesterday that it's not going to be season-ending, that it's not as bad as people initially thought when it came to Rasheed Rice. But I think when you get him back, when you get Pacheco back, watch out, this offense is going to be in fantastic shape uh, going forward. And that's why I believe their best football is in front of them because they're still winning despite these injuries, and they're going to get some of these guys back here in the coming weeks. Today's show is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the place to go for daily fantasy made easy. Here's how it works. You choose two more players in any given category, get the choice of more or less, whether you're talking fantasy points in football, rebounds in basketball, goals in hockey, home runs in baseball, all sorts of different categories to choose from. If you played along with me on Prize Picks last night, we won big, folks. I had Salvi to have more. Then one and a half hits, runs, and RBIs. He delivered. Big night for seven up Perez. And our guy Travis Kelsey with a very solid showing with 70-plus receiving yards. He hit the bore as well. I put $20 down. I made 60 on prize picks last night. And, folks, you can win on prize picks as well. They're going to give you $50 for free when you play $5. That's all you have to do is play $5, and you're getting $50. You don't even have to win to get the money. Play along with us, pricepicks.com slash CLNS, promo code CLNS. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Price Picks, proud partner of the Kansas City Chiefs. Number three on Overreaction Tuesday, Kareem Hunt is without question your RB1 until Isaiah Pacheco makes his return. And, folks, that is not an overreaction. I love what I've seen from Kareem Hunt. I am surprised with what I've seen from Kareem Hunt these last two weeks. If you look back at what he was in Cleveland, he looked like that he had lost his speed. He was struggling to get more than three or four yards a carry. And although he's not having the breakaway runs in this Chiefs offense, you're not seeing him get the 10, 15, 20-yard gains. He's doing just enough. He's moving the ball forward. And we've seen what the Chiefs have done with their offense with Pacheco, that they depend on the run game, that they've become a run-first football team over the last couple of seasons. And Kareem Hunt has still provided the ability to do that. Last night was very effective with over 100 yards rushing, a touchdown score, also had a catch in the receiving game as well for 15 yards. Graham Hunt's been a nice fit, and with the fumbling issues from Carson Steele, with Samaj P. Ryan not quite looking up to speed just yet, Kareem Hunt has been exactly what the doctor ordered for this Kansas City Chiefs team under these circumstances. And you look at what he's done, over 170 yards, a touchdown, had a few catches in the receiving game as well. Kareem Hunt is that guy. 
He's not replacing Isaiah Pacheco. When Pacheco comes back, that's still his job. But Kareem Hunt has done exactly what the Kansas City Chiefs have needed. The run game has not missed a beat since Pacheco left. And Kareem Hunt deserves a lot of credit. Brett Veach and company with a brilliant signing, bringing Kareem Hunt in. I like what I've seen. Do you believe in Kareem Hunt? Is it going to continue? Weigh in, let us know. B for believe, D for don't. What do you guys think? Chime in in the comment section below. We had a great time on our watch party last night here on the Kansas City Chiefs report, but that's not all the Chiefs coverage we're bringing you, folks. Even throughout the bye week, we got you covered with our daily news and rumors. We're doing a live show later on this afternoon here on the channel. We're also uh, going to continue to bring you our breaking news, our Q&A mailbags. It's all right here on the Kansas City Chiefs Report. If you are a diehard Chiefs fan, this is the channel for you. No better way to celebrate a Chiefs victory than subbing for dubs. YouTube.com slash Chiefs TV. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Make sure everybody subscribes, and you'll be glad you did. All right, let's talk about some negatives here. And I got to talk about Jawan Taylor. One of the big lowlights of the night for the Kansas City Chiefs was the performance they got out of their starting right tackle, Jawan Taylor, who has just been a disaster so far to start out 2024. And I thought he struggled in 2023 to begin with. And I think it's time for everybody to admit that Jawan Taylor just simply is a bad football player. He is not what the Kansas City Chiefs need. They are winning in spite of Jawan Taylor. He is holding this team back. The problem, though, is that when you look at the options on the offensive line right now for Kansas City, you still might not have a better option than Jawan Taylor. You look at the PFF grades from Jawan Taylor last night, and they were just atrocious. An overall grade of 51.5, a pass block grade of 50, a run block grade of 56.8. And then he got called for two penalties, which were just simply inexcusable. And here's the reality for the Kansas City Chiefs when it comes to Jawan Taylor here. This is a crazy stat for you. There is not a single player in the NFL that has been more penalized on offense, defense, special teams, everything in between than that guy right there starting right tackle, Jawan Taylor. He's been called since 2023 for 31 total penalties and seven already this year, including two last night. My buddy Coach Bo out of Lawrence, he always reminds me all the time, you either got to shit or get off the pot. And if you're Jawan Taylor, he needs to figure the hell out pretty fast because he is holding this Chiefs team back and for the money that he's being paid as well. I mean, what a horrible return on investment the Chiefs are getting out of Jawan Taylor. $80-plus million for nothing, just down the drain, down the tube. I'm sick of it. And Jawan Taylor, I know that the Chiefs don't have a ton of options that are better than him. Maybe they go to Kingsley or something potentially, but they got a problem they did figure out with Jawan Taylor. He has got to improve because what he's doing right now is just simply not good enough. It's inexcusable. Number five on Overreaction Tuesday. I heard from several Chiefs fans as I was scrolling through the comments section last night, a lot of you were saying that you're upset with the way Patrick Mahomes has played throughout these first five games, that he is holding this Kansas City Chiefs team back. And I got to say that's an overreaction. I'll be honest, Mahomes – isn't playing great right now. He has gone 10 straight regular season games dating back to last season with a turnover. That's the longest stretch of his career, although I'll say the interception he had last night was not his fault. That's on Juju. But you think about it. You are literally giving him guys off the street to work with right now, with Juju and Kareem Hunt, among others here. And look what those guys are doing. Mahomes is still making the most of what he has to work with. Last night, throw for a season high, 331 yards with no Pacheco, no Rasheed Rice. What did the Chiefs do? They turned to number 15. They said, it's your job to lead us out, to lead us through this situation. And he did so. Outside of that one pick, that wasn't his fault. 
I thought it was a very good night for Patrick Mahomes. I understand he's thrown six interceptions, same number that he's thrown touchdowns. Maybe it's not an MVP season for Patrick Mahomes in 2024. But you know what? That's okay. The Chiefs are 5-0. They're still winning football games. There's still not another quarterback I want in the NFL than this guy right here. There's no one I trust more when it comes to the fourth quarter, when the Chiefs are needing a rally, when they're needing a score to lead them to victory than this guy right here. Even the Bengals game when he didn't play great. When he had, I would call a bad game that day. What happened? Patrick Mahomes led a game-winning drive setting up a Harrison Butker field goal attempt. So, folks, 15 is going to be fine. He's going to be okay. We don't care about the MVP. We care about getting rings in February around here. That's what matters. Patrick Mahomes is going to be just fine. Before we go, what is your overreaction to the Chiefs' win against the New Orleans Saints? Let me know. Chime in the comments section. Get loud, get proud, sound off Chiefs Kingdom, and weigh in with your thoughts. If you enjoyed today's show, you enjoyed the Chiefs win, you enjoyed that Royals win, you know what to do. Like the video, we certainly would appreciate it. I'm Tyler Jones. We'll see you next time here on the Chiefs.